Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on the video. I appreciate your support. If you haven't already subscribed and liked, please consider doing so. So for those that are new to the channel, what I do is I take projects from old electronic magazines like Poplar Electronics, Radio Electronics, etc. And I take that project and I bring it to life. I'll build it right from scratch. I'll etch the board. I'll put the components on it, put it in a case, test it out and show you. So if that's interesting to you, please hang on and watch the rest of the video and I hope you enjoy it. So today we're going to take an article from Popular Electronics, May 1999. It's an electrolytic capacitance meter. And from what I gather, it's just going to test the big capacitors, you know, like the 10,000 microfarad ones and from power supplies or big computers, you know, that kind of thing. And it's... Um, it, uses uh, pretty common parts actually except for the chip this chip is a 74 c925 i've got a place where i can get one it's 40 dollars, but i'm pretty sure it's genuine because it's been in their inventory since 2007 so that's uh, that's a good sign right um in any event uh so i have um, all the parts except for that chip uh, but that will come in shortly and yeah, so hang on, enjoy the, the video. Uh, I, I know it's going to be fun, for me at least, anyway. Um, I'm, there might be some struggles, but we'll, we'll manage to get through them. A little bit about that 74925 chip. What it is, it's an all-in-one chip, as I mentioned earlier, and it's a multiplexer of four seven-segment display um, displays, right? And... In the olden days, you know, you'd have to have a chip for every uh, seven-segment display LED. And this one does it all. And it's a multiplex, too, so you only have to have one chip, in essence, to drive four uh, seven-segment uh, displays. Now, I, I claim not to be an engineer of any sort. I'm just a basic technician at the very most. Uh, and what I like to do is I like to learn as I build these circuits and put it under the scope to follow the traces and you know just to understand how the circuit works so i'm not an engineer i'm just a i'm just a technician type hack that likes building popular electronic magazine articles and have a lot of fun with it in any event I, i'm showing you a, a picture of the chip in itself it's got its own oscillator in there the, the multiplexer portion of it and uh we've got some latches and then um uh, of course, the power supply rails. And I'll show you the schematic next. Okay, so I've got the schematic uh, up on the computer screen. And uh, as you can see, it's there's not a lot of components involved. And by the way, there's no printed circuit board. And I'm going to have to use perf board. Now, I've got some other boards. They're kind of pre-made. Um, anyway, I'll show you when I get to that point. Anyway, in any event, just looking at the circuit... Um, Starting on the left, you could actually see the power supply. So it's pretty simple. We've got a 5-volt power supply, a positive 5-volt power supply. and But then when you look at the very top, there's a 7905. And, of course, that's a negative uh, power supply, a negative rail for a 5-volt power supply. Now, it's, it looks unusual because they've got the input of that regulated tied to ground. Um. And according to the article, and I'll just read here, um, in that configuration, the IC4, the, the, the regulator, input is grounded while the common ground terminal is tied to the positive supply rail. Because under that condition, the ground is negative with respect to the positive supply rail. And uh, the 7905 outputs a regulated, mi regulated minus 5 volt signal. So why wouldn't they just build a normal minus five volt power supply, like a plus and minus a five volt power supply. Not too sure, but it is interesting. And again, once I get it all built, you know, I'll go through the motions and try to understand why they do that. And that's part of the fun, right? Anyway, after that, we've got a minus five uh, volt output going to uh, Q9, which is that transistor. And then we've got a voltage divider, in essence, and we've got four selections. So there's a 0.6 volt drop across that transistor when it's conducting. And that'll bring it down to 4.4 volts. And then that's where we get those different currents, right? On the four position switch. 
So, yeah, so that's where we are. And uh, let me bring you back in on the rest of the circuit. One thing I forgot to mention earlier on in the video is this capacitance meter uses the time constant of a capacitor to measure its capacitance. So we all know time is equal to RC, and there's five time constants to charge a capacitor fully. And uh, this meter somehow captures that and measures, I don't know how accurately, uh, the actual ca capacitance from it. So let me just read from the article on the, the good part of the function of the circuit itself. So if you look at the bottom left-hand kind of portion of the circuit, just out to the right of the power supply, you'll see a switch, the test and discharge um, switch. And that's where all the action is. And that's, in fact, where your capacitor that you're measuring is. So the article says, when switch 2 is set to the test position, the base of Q6 is pulled low through the unknown capacitor, which initially acts as a short, turning it on. That forces pin 5 of IC2 high, turning the latch off, and at the same time, a low is applied to pin 12 of IC2, resetting the counter. At that point, the charge on the unknown capacitor begins to rise. When the charge reaches about 4 volts, Q6 turns off again, latching the final count to the display and resetting the counter again. In the meantime, the charge on the unknown capacitor continues to increase until it reaches a level that's sufficient to forward bias Q10, clamping the voltage to about 5 volts. Note, C9 is included in the circuit to keep the two transistor comparator, 5 and 6, Q5 and Q6, from false triggering, while C5 injects a delay between latching and resetting operations. When switch 2 is returned to their discharge position, the unknown capacitor discharges through 18. So I kind of get it, um, but as I mentioned earlier, once I get the thing built, I'll put the circuit under test. Hopefully it works, and I'll put it under test just to understand it a lot better. All right, so enough talking. Let's get on with the build. Okay, so I'm using these perforated boards. They were actually intended for, I think, Arduino projects and such. Um, however, I'm going to try to use it for this project. If I have, Maybe I'll put the power supply on one and then the rest of the circuit on the other one. Anyway, we'll see how it goes, and I'll bring you back in once I get some parts on it. Yeah, I'm just bringing you in just to show you how far I've progressed on the build. So again, this design doesn't have a printed circuit board, so I'm actually using these perforated boards, but they were made for Arduino. But, you know, I'm, I'm not too happy with them, uh, to be honest with you. It's just, you know, not enough space. I did order some good perf boards, so they should be coming soon. And uh, perhaps the next project I make will uh, use one of those bigger ones, bigger perf boards. But anyway, so this is kind of the power supply. And these two boards I put together, they're eh, just this stuff here. Anyway, I'll bring you back in when I get all three boards done and just before we're ready to test. Okay, so I've got all the boards complete and I've kind of combined these two here. I think I showed you that earlier. And this is the power supply board. So I'm going to have that stacked on. I've got some risers, risers here. And... Yeah, so I'm glad I double-checked the boards because I did find a couple of mistakes in there. So anyway, uh, the good news is, is just with the power board itself, I plugged it in and I'm getting my voltages. So that's a good sign. Um, uh, now, so what I'm waiting for, in fact, I, I'm not waiting because it came in, is the main chip. So it's a 74C925. That's the chip that I uh, spent $40 for. Uh, they said it's in, and I'm just about to go there right after this video. In any event, I think we're at the point now where we can start to test. So let me go pick up that chip, put it in, cross our fingers that it works. And um, I'll get back to you at that point. Okay, so I thought I'd uh, catch up with you all and t tell you there's lots of problems on this circuit. Uh, and I don't know if I'll be able to fix them all, but I'm going to try my best. First of all, this circuit is very, I don't know, sensitive, if I can call it that. Now, just ignore the actual value, the 62 value right now. Just disregard what it means. It means nothing at this point. But when I just come over here, you can see that if I keep my fingers on these wires, it the, the numbers accumulate. 
Now, I don't think they should be doing that, to be honest with you, um, but it does. And, but let, let me show you a, a capacitor test, okay? Oh, okay, actually that was off. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll just power it off here. Just clear the decks. Okay, so um, this is a 2,200 microfarad capacitor. So it should range, it, I'm hoping it should be something like 260, 220 or something like that. Let's take a look. And it's going over what I expected because I, I was expecting it to stop at 260. However, it'd be interesting to see if it stops coming up here. And it doesn't. Okay, so before uh, I, I turned on the camera, it actually stopped at 260. So I'll try one more time. Okay, so when I, I've got it right now, I've got it discharged, and I'm just charging it up again. It starts from zero, so that last number didn't clear. That might be a problem too, but we'll get looking at that, of course, but there's many other problems too. Okay, so I don't think it's gonna stop where it should. Um, so I'm, I'm also having some other problems, uh, with the range switch, which is right here. So I've got it on the highest, um, current drawing at this point. And, uh, you know, what? I'm just going to unplug this. Okay. Oh, by the way, the AC cord, when I have that AC cord on my lap going to the receptacle, it just nonstop counts up. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix all these problems. Like I said, I'm going to try. Um, but I did notice when I first came in the basement to try the circuit once again, it actually worked for the first three times or two times. I'll take that back two times. Um, but then after that, once I started turning the camera on, it got all weird. Um, it would go to 260 and, you know, we'll just, you know, um, say that's 2,600. In reality, on a good capacitor uh, meter, it's, 1900 I think 1900 um in any event so I've got a lot of problems I've got the range switch problem um I've got the sensitivity issue with just going around uh, touching it with your your hands um and you know what this might have been a problem too here let me just move that AC cord away from it and you know what just for fun let's try again Okay, so I'll just discharge it. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so that actually is a, a, something new. It is reading 22. Now I'm on the 10 times, I think. No, I'm on the 100 times. So if you were to add another uh, two zeros at the end, it's 2200. So that's more reasonable because that capacitor is 2,200 microfarad. Now, I, all I did was I had this power line kind of there. Let me reset it. I'll discharge the capacitor. Okay, now let's do a new reading. Okay, now you can see it went up by a lot. Well, a lot more than it was. So, again, it shouldn't be doing this. I, I don't know exactly what's wrong. But I'll tell you one thing. There is a positive voltage regulator here, and it does get very warm, in fact, hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the, the, the drop resistors on the actual LED display. I've got a 46 ohm, I think, on there. I'm going to increase that so it doesn't draw as much current. I, uh, it's drawing way too much at this point because it's very bright. So uh, a couple things I'm going to do. Change those resistors. And I'm going to look at the time, uh, the RC time is equal to RC constant. There's two resistors in here, or a resistor and a cap, I think. So I'm going to find that, and I'm going to see how accurate that is, and maybe adjust that. I'll try to get some resistors and capacitors that are very, very good. And I don't know, maybe work on the shielding problem too. Uh, but let's give that a try. I'll um, I'll make the changes and I'll get back to you. 
okay, so it's gone from bad to worse. So the, w w the last uh, video or portion of the video that I left it with, I was going to try a few things. I did try those things and it didn't matter. First of all, the current, ignore what you're seeing now, but before uh, the current was drawing only a quarter of a milliamp per segment, actually for each uh, letter of the segment. So, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that wasn't a problem. I, I checked the time constant and that was fine. There's no issues there. And uh, what else did I check? I can't even remember. Of course, the wiring was all checked and everything else. I checked everything. Everything seems to be perfect, but I can't figure this circuit out. And let's remember, I had a whole bunch of issues too with, um, I don't know, RF type energy. Uh, when I would touch the wires, it would screw the, the, the numbers up. So th the next thing I decided to do was let's just take that crazy crazy power supply for the negative supply if you don't remember there it is and you can actually see that the input is set to ground and the ground is actually the input for the voltage i have no idea i i yet to figure that power supply out anyway what i'm trying to say is is well before i say pack it in what i did is i actually built a positive and negative power supply and i decided to inject it into the actual circuit itself and this is what the result is it's horrible i've given up it's a thursday i need to get a video out and in fact i'm going to release this video although it is a loser it's a failure i didn't get it going but i have a funny feeling it wasn't going to be a good capacitance meter anyway so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pack it up and I'll put the stuff away. Uh, yes, I do have a good chip, 74C925. I can actually use that chip for another project I have in mind. So it's, it's still going to be used. And in fact, the, probably the common cathode display will probably be used too for another project. So I'm going to pack it in. I'm going to put it in a box and label it not working. And maybe, maybe one day I'll get back to it. I doubt it. Um, but it's time to move on to something new. Anyway, if you haven't uh, seen some of my other videos, please go back and check them out. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And bye for now, and another project will come up shortly.